Well, hi folks. Welcome to today's edition of our video cast, My Life with Robert Burns. We're really pleased you could join us. My name is Douglas McKenzie, and together with my new at Burns Club friend and colleague, Jim Thompson. Hi, Jim. Hi, Douglas. I would like to tell you a little bit about what we plan to do during today's session. Now that everybody's learned how to use the video chat technology, mainly to keep in touch with family and friends, we thought it'd be great if we could use it to introduce you to some of our cronies from around the Burns world, to get to know them a little bit better and to hear a bit about what makes a Burnsian tick. For today's session, we're delighted to introduce a crony who's become a Will Kent face as a talented speaker and reader on the Burns supper circuit. Cronies everywhere. To tell us about his life with Robert Burns, please welcome Graham White. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, good afternoon, Douglas. Good afternoon, Jim. Pleasure to be here. You had a good day, Graham? Yes, very good day. Very, very good day. Very good, good morning, Douglas. I think with the weather being quite nice this morning, it cheers everybody up. We've been really lucky during this lockdown that the weather's uh, been fairly good most of the time. It's meant that we've not all been stuck in our houses. We've been able to get out in the gardens and out for a bit of fresh air. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. Uh, to get us started, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a newcomer up boy, born and bred. Uh, I had the pleasure of being born in, in Lime Road in Newcomerock. Um, and that's uh, quite extra special for, for me and for being part of the, the Newcomerock Burns Club. Uh, where, I was born... Lime Road? Lime Road is... Uh, if, before you've gone out Newcomerock heading for Kirkconnell, um, you kind of... It's the last can you turn up to your, your right. Oh, all right. I know, I know just a long straight road right up the top. It takes you up to the, the old lime kilns that was up there. All right. So named Lime Road. It was a, a wee prefab. It yeah. was in, so I was born 1965. So It's, ama it's amazing how these, these prefabs, which were always uh, temporary buildings when they were first built, amazing how they survived and have become very substantial structures now. Oh, they were great wee houses. Um, they were wee tin houses, that was the only thing. And they, when, if you, you get thin and lichening, of course we had thin and lichening the other night there. And uh, you were always told when you were wee, you had to sit in the middle of the living room flare. Couldn't get near the walls because if the lichening hit, hit the walls at all, if it hit your house, it just went right through the house. So anything that you touched, you were, you were electrocuted. So you had to sit, sit right in the middle of the, the, the flare. Wow, I didn't know that. Aye, uh, uh, when they were built, they were flat roofs, and you, you put a, there was a lichening conductor on them. And uh, many a time, my mother would tell me that she would, they would watch the lichening, but the other houses that you could see, you would see the lichening hitting the conductor, coming down and bouncing off the pad and, and shooting back up into the sky. So, uh, it was... Uh, when you were a wee boy and getting dealt stories like that, that kind of kept you away from the, the sink. Dear, dear. So Lime Road born and bred? Lime Road born and bred, yep. Get on your come up, boy. So you've lived in your Cumnock all your days? When I first got married in uh, 88, we moved into Cumnock for about five years, four or five years maybe, uh, and then came back up. The call in your come up was too good. It was, it was too much for me. I had to come back up. Graham, how did you manage to get a passport into the borough of Cumnock? <laughs> I was a hard gene, I'll tell you. I had to use the story that my father was a Cumnock man. He, he was from <laughs> Carhardy Hill. And the, minute, the minute you mentioned Carhardy Hill and, and Cumnock, that was you. You were, you were a friend for life. <laughs> so, so you did you do your schooling in your Cumnock? Cairnhill Primary School, aye. Uh, up there, and then doing it to come up to finish off in the come up academy, the, the the big new academy that was there. Um, I the school. A lot of folk look at their school life, and 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 they'll they'll go back and say it wasn't that great. But I I enjoyed the school. I wasn't the academic, but I enjoyed the school. Um, and we had what, some what? great great characters in the school. We had a 
we had uh, you know, Ken Jim Shanklin and his wife. Um, so Mrs. Shanklin, that was that was your teacher uh, at the primary, and, and she was she was a character and a half. So, what subjects did you did you enjoy most? Uh, none. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed you know, I enjoyed art and, and, and sort of mixing with other folks and stuff like that. Uh, maybe getting out and doing the sports. I enjoyed I didn't know then that I would I would I would achieve other things in sports when I was at school. Because well you don't hindsight's a wonderful thing, but you don't know when you're at school what you're going to be good at. And I think there's only a chosen few uh, that know exactly where they're, they're going to go. And what they're going to do, and 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 succeed, and actually yeah. do what they did. Uh, but there are not a lot of young kids nowadays can where they want to go or what they want to do. So, so what did you do when you left school? Well, I had the pleasure of being one of the first uh, youth opportunity schemes, the YOP scheme that was there, uh, where you would go away and 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 do your your six month at whatever you, you may be. Um, uh, so I started off in a firm for there. And then I, I, can, I moved into, I was in the youth club. Um, and that's, that's how I came, Donald my vicar. Uh, Donald was a, a, a really su superior, superb role model. And uh, anybody that he was, he, it was it was way or, or anybody would look up to him, and uh, he just uh, just a great guy, and he can inspire me into getting into youth work. So uh, I did a spell in youth work when I was I was only be eighteen, maybe eighteen, nineteen, and that led me to thinking my career. I wanted to work with with people, whether it was. Whether it was kids, whether it was adults, or whether it was uh, elderly, um, I just felt that that's the kind of that's the kind of place I wanted to be. I enjoyed the. So, so let, let me get this right. So Donald McVicker was the responsible adult that inspired you to a career choice. Oh, I didn't say he was responsible, <laughs> <laughs> but he did inspire me. I, I, I was some man, Donald. Fond memories. And, and when you decided to uh, get into things like matrimony, you, you chose a new Cumnock girl? A new Cumnock lassie, aye. Rona, Rona Muir. Uh, her father, Alec Muir. Alec, uh, the funeral director and the joiner. And we knew each other through school, but we didn't actually, we weren't really drawn to each other at the school. Uh, and it wasn't until later life, maybe, Early, early teen, the late teens, early twenties that that we 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 got together. Thirty five years ago, we've been married for thirty two. Well done, congratulations. So as you say, yes, we've had some many happy times. Brilliant, fantastic, and you've got what two kids? Two kids, Stacy and Gavin. Um, new days with the, the program that's out, Gavin and Stacy. Um, that's what people say. Oh, it's Gavin and Stacey, and uh, of course, your Stacey doesn't like that because she's the he was the first, she's the oldest. So it's always but got to be Stacey and Gavin. Stacey and Gavin, we have got I. <laughs> so, so what what do, you, what do you do for your job at the moment? At the moment, I work in mental health, adult mental health. So uh, I worked with. Ironically, in 1996, I uh, started with Air Action for Mental Health, a local charity, and it worked in social and recreational support uh, within mental health. Um, latterly, uh, that is, has changed its name to now 360, it's called. Uh, and we work in a sort of different way. We work in a, a kind of life coaching way. Um, so that's the kind of... So you, uh, values that we have, the, the life coaching and coaching um, within mental health. So that, that that's going to be fun. Yeah. Challenging as well, I would imagine. It, oh, it's challenging. It's certainly challenging. And it's, it's, uh, it's even more challenging 
uh, in this current climate. Um, because you're, we've, we've tried for years to, to get rid of social isolation and, and now we're, we're, we're actually creating social isolation. Um, no on purpose, but it's, it's, it's there uh, with lockdowns and people no being able to leave the house. And, uh, and that's the fantastic thing about this. Can you zoom? It, it, just this social platform, it's absolutely brilliant because you see faces and that's that's what we need to do. We need to see faces. Uh, you, you can't talk to somebody on the telephone. It's just this doesn't it doesn't have the same the, the, the same feeling. You need to be able to read the situation, read what's going on. Yeah. Are you finding before, before I get Jim to come in and ask you some questions that uh, about our main subject, uh, Burns? Let me just finish off with a couple of uh, a couple of points. You, you hinted at uh, other interests earlier on. Uh, what, what what have been your other interests? Um, Apart from your work and, and your life with Burns, I spent a lot of time as a in athletics. So, I, I, in fact, I started my career for, from a, the youth club. We were trying to raise money, and 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 I decided I would uh, run the Cumnock Half Marathon, nineteen eighty four. I think it would be. Um, I would be about eighteen, and I, I, I said, right, I'll run this half marathon for a wee bit of money. And I finished twelfth. Now I had only two weeks training, and when I tell people this, and I tell other runners this, um, they were just so amazed and said, "Look, you, you need to, you need to get into a club. You need to join a club. You need to start running." So I, I joined AC Fourth, and I run with them for. I played it running for uh, maybe five, six years, and then I met a man. Um, Bert Mackay, his name was, uh, he used to, he, he owned Nickel and Mackay Steel in the, at the airport. And Bert Mackay was a coach and he coached uh, a, a fella called John Graham, uh, a Scottish internationalist marathon runner. And he, he, he wrote me a lovely letter and he said to me, if I can take you and I can increase your mileage, you can be um, one of the top runners in Scotland. And he worked out a programme for me, gave me the programme up, I sort of did it religiously. And within a three, four, five months of working with him, I received my first Scottish international vest and went down to Basingstoke to run in a cross country down there. Um, and from there, it just snowballed and represented, represented Scotland both uh, on the three disciplines, on the road, on the country and on the track. So I've, I've had a, a very uh, pleasurable career and met some fantastic people along the way. Very good. Well done. One final question for me before uh, I get Jim to talk to you a wee bit. Um, we, we all know that you, you go by the nickname Chalky, which a lot of people with name White do. Is that something that's been there since primary school? Uh, it, it, was, it was something that was there. Aye, it probably was. Uh, but it wasn't for the primary school I go to. It was it was a a, a fellow down the, the road for us, and he was called Billy McCracken. He uh, went by the nickname of Binky, and uh, he sort of gave me that that nickname. He was a lot older than me, but it was like we all did when we were young. We all always look up to somebody that's older than you, and I, I used to look up to him because he was in Lime Road as well. So, uh, and he, he he gave me this nickname, and he. Gave me it because my second name is White, but it's no white in the colour. It's white as in the Isle of White, which was a standing joke for us for a for a long time because when we were when uh, Rona was pregnant with Stacey and we we kept it was going to be a lassie and we told folk it was going to be a lassie. We didn't do any of these baby showers and and stuff. Uh, folk would ask us out of our corner, and we used to say Isla. <laughs> And there was only a handful of folk go that. And when we <laughs> tell them that, and they say, Isla White, oh, that's a lovely name. <laughs> Very good. Uh, standing joke for a while. But uh, I went to, I've got two nicknames. I, I, I went to Bulgaria in 1992 with a big pal of mine, Hug McHarg, and his wife, Jean. And we went up to our karaoke, and I put my name down as Charlie Wiggett. Uh, <laughs> And the name Wiggett came from 
the post the post woman in uh, Cumnock in the bar hall. When we stayed in the bar hall, she came to the door, there was nobody in, so she went next door and she said, is there a Mr and Mrs Wiggett stay here? <laughs> and of course, next door was saying, no, there's a Mr and Mrs White stay next door, and there's a Mr and Mrs White stays just further up the road, which is, is Chalky White for the, for the Burns Club. They mm -hmm. stay just further up the road to us. I said, no, no, it's definitely Wiggett. You can see it here, W-I-G-H-T, Wiggett. <laughs> so I signed my name as Charlie Wiggett for this, this karaoke, and ever since that nickname has stuck. So Hug and, and some of the boys that I worked with in Arthur Dyer's factory when I started in there call me Charlie. <laughs> so I'll answer to Oni though. Very good. Well, for a Charlie, I'll, I'll pass over to a Jim to start talking to you a wee bit about Robert Burns. So, Graham, what drew you into Burns? I was invited during, in 1996, and I was invited to the Burns Supper, which was held in the community centre that, that year. And uh, it was Hugh McHarg again that suggested that I come with him. So uh, I went down, and of course, when I went to the Burns Supper, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what Burns etiquette was. Uh, I really didn't know much, much more about Burns other than the Tama Shanter and to a loose and to a moose. Um, and I sat down with him and Willie Parson, my brother-in-law, and we opened a bottle of whiskey and the rest was history. But of course, uh, at that time I was still running uh, and I was, I was kind of doing a lot of I was running about 100 miles a week. So an eight stone 12 person meeting a 70 CL bottle of whiskey didn't get down too well. Uh, so uh, I ended up, I think, I think I ended up a wee bit kind of inebriated that day. I was through. It's food as a cook, as you say, up here. I take it you enjoy yourself at your first one supper then? I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed the stir to the nicht. I kind of lost it a wee bit <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the other end of the nicht. But uh, it, was, it was very, very entertaining and it drew me back. And ever since then, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. How did you migrate from that into being a reader and, and then a speaker? I kind of, um, I, I, I kind of a lot of things. I, I came to the smoker as well, uh, and uh, I've actually I get a, a great uh, painting that was done by Jim Wilson, an artist, the local artist. He was, in fact, he was my my, my art teacher at Cumnock Academy, and he did the uh, new Cumnock in the time of Burns. And I don't know if you'll remember that one. Do you remember that in Douglas? Yeah, yeah, I've it, got a copy it, of that. It, yeah. was, it was in the old bloke side, and it was in the bit where you went for your high tea and all that sort of stuff. But of course, he, he did this. Uh, I've got it here. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Oh, aye. Yeah. But uh, they, were all, they were black and white, but for, um, for an extra wee bit of money, it would do it in colour for you. So they were just prints. And he did mine in watercolour for me. And, and for that, the minute I saw it, I can it, it it was like a it was like one of these moments with the light bulb. You could associate Burns with New Cumnock. You, you, you were you were walking by places like the old mill and Ken and Burns had stayed there. You were walking by places like the castle and Ken and Burns was, was going by that and would maybe have a have a drama in there. Um so it kind of a light bulb moment and it, it just kind of drew me into it a wee bit more. And I got the opportunity uh, when somebody asked me, in fact, I think it was yourself, Jim, I'm not sure, but they'd asked me to uh, do a wee thing at the smoker. Uh, and uh, uh, I recited, uh, what was it, Two or Loose, I think I did, because I, I think that is a fascinating poem for it's it's overlooked in the burn circle because everybody seems to go for a higher level of poem or a, a longer poem 
But, but that is just incredible. And the, and the, the finish it with the power of the gift of gears to see ourselves like others see us is just a, an, an incredibly uh, accurate description of what human life's all about. Um, and that just, uh, with that, I then get other opportunities to do other things. And it just took me a wee bit further. So if, if, if that was the, the, the first thing that you did uh, in the Burns Club, had you ever had you, had you done Burns at school at all before that? I did it when I was younger, I, but I, I don't really remember it. I, um, I had a, I, I've not got a great memory because um, when I was younger and I, I tell the boys in the Zoom, uh, when we do Zoom sessions at the Burns Club Blairers, uh, that when I'd fell off a roof when I was about nine years old, it left me kind of scarred with a bit of a memory problem. Um, so I'm no, I'm no great with, with memory. Um, and, and I got a lift because I, I doing some of the poems that, that, that Burns has, has written. And I, I do a Death and Dr. Hornbook, which I think is one of Burns's fabulous pieces of work that's been done uh, and I'll do that and I, I remember it. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite chuffed with myself for doing that. But, that I uh, mean, that, that's a great achievement for somebody that has a, has a memory problem to be able to, to, to keep all that in. Uh, it takes a bit of learning. Well, it takes a bit of learning. That, um, I, I, there's, all, there's all different ways of learning. I, I, th I think people um, learn learn poems different ways. Some people can read it and, and will we'll read two or three uh, verses and, and learn them. And I tend to find my style of learning is listening to it, listening to the poem and reciting along with the poem. And uh, I think one of the, one of the best uh, CDs I ever got was the, the CD I got for the Burns, when you come to Burns Club, we all the different people on it reciting. And I, I used to listen to while I walk reciting uh, and I would I would just just recite William, and then I would I would, I would sort of recite it all the way down to work, and recite it all the way home, uh, and then I would start reciting it when I went to it, went to the went to the bin or new, new come up lagoons new, uh, and I would go out with the dog and I would recite it around about and and you would pass folk and you were speaking to yourself so they would be looking at you in know, all different different ways. And thinking, what's going on there? Uh, so, do you have a do you have a favourite poem? Death and Doctor Ron book is is my favourite, um, and I I kind of chose it because uh, it, there's a there's a there's a kind of paradox with with Tamashanta. Tamashanta's fabulous. It's a fabulous piece of work, and they do it. It's one of the one of Burns' best works. But the paradox for me with that is that you learn, you learn to not like it. If you know what I mean, you learn to can hate it. Because everywhere you go, people ask you to do Tamashanta. And you think, ah, no, no that I wouldn't like to do it. I would, I would love, to, love to sit down one day and, and actually learn it. But paradoxically, as I said, you, you get people asking for this. So you, you can you learn to know, appreciate it as much because you want to put something else out there. Mm -hmm. So Death and Dr. Hornbrook was, was my equivalent to the Tamashanta. Do you have a couple of verses that you could give us? Uh, oh, it's, uh, I love the stare. Some books are lies from end to end and some great lies were never penned. Even ministers have been kenned in holy rapture, arousing wood at times they've end and nailed with scripture. But this that I am going to tell, which lately on a nick befell, is just as true as the deals in hell of Dublin City, the airy nearer comes ourselves a muckle pity. And it just it just it just draws you into something. And and it just uh, it's a wonderful poem once you actually start to decipher it and, and find out what he was saying. And for somebody to sit down with the Grim Reaper and the Grim Reaper to, to almost have a counselling session with the Grim Reaper. Um, I thought it was fantastic. And it fitted in with the, the work that I did 
as well because when you're working in mental health, it's all about sort of sitting down, listening to somebody, and so it, it, it kind of married together. So I, I just thoroughly enjoyed the poem. The good thing about the Ed and Dr. Horn book, but for somebody who's new into worms, is that it, 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 it makes you find out some of the references in it, like he's, when he's talking about the grave digger and, and he uses a name and stuff like that. If, 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 you're, if you're into the poem, which makes folk are, because it's a lovely piece of work, it makes you to learn about the history of the country and the place at the time. Aye. And folk find that very enjoyable, and it's obviously clear that you have. So, so how was your journey in the Burns Club? You know, you would start that first one supper because you wouldn't be allowed in unless you were a member. But uh, you progressed for there, I'm sure. I certainly have, and uh, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed every minute. It just, it, it's just been a great experience, absolutely wonderful. And I think when you get to learn it burns, and you and you get to learn what it was meaning. We we some of the poems that he wrote, as I said, you were saying about Death and Doctor Hornbook and and some of the stuff that he wrote. Uh, Ways me for Johnny Gibbs Hole now, quoth I, the grave digger. Um, but uh, some of the stuff that, that, that's in it, when you decipher that and you get the meaning for it, it actually it starts to enhance your life in a way because you, you actually start to read the meanings of what's happening within your life. So it's, it's a kind of, it's very difficult to describe it to somebody that, was, that would newly be coming into Burns. Uh, but it, it, it just, it, it's just been a, it's just been a, a great learning curve, finding out all about Burns and, and, and about different places. When did you join the, the committee at the Burns Club, Graham? Do you remember? Uh, so about seven years ago, maybe. It'd be 2000 and, maybe 2011 or something, 2012. Could be. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm not, I'm not very good with dates, so... Uh, and and, and you, you eventually became president of the club and are a, a well-respected past president now, so it, what, what were the highlights of your presidential year? Oh, great. It was a great year. Great. Absolutely brilliant. But it goes in quick and you don't realise how quick it's gone. Um, and you, you tend to look back at it and think, could I or would I? Of uh, did something differently, or or but no, I don't think you would. I think there's when you're president, you, you don't really um, see what you're doing as much as the rest of the club. And you're, there's a great bunch of boys behind behind every president, and it's just uh, it's just amazing. It's just a it's it's a great feeling. It's a, it's a great honour. Uh, and I've I've got my wee sort of past president badge I brought down. Um, uh, it's just an honour to to have been there and, and done that. And, and have you have you joined any other Burns clubs or any other organisations connected with Burns? Uh, no, no, I've no. I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to join any other. I, I, I feel kind of a strange disloyalty if I, if I joined another Burns club. Um, I enjoy mixing with other Burns clubs. Uh, and and I, I think uh, one of my biggest ambitions is actually to win the quiz. <laughs> take, take it away for press week. <laughs> is, is there any particular aspect of Burns that uh, gives you more pleasure than another? His, his songs. Um, I, I like a lot of Burns songs. Uh, his romantic songs. Uh, they, they're just... Second to none, um, but I I, I kind of admired uh, admired the, the, the what he stood for, his values and his ideals that he had, um, that were always like given to him by his, his father, um, but there was a lot of different poets that he read that he also uh, took the values of so he. In the days, freedom was freedom was uh, you weren't um, you weren't bound by 
by any individual and, and, and so he dictated to you. So there was a wee bit of uh, liberty there and, and freedom for you to, 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 to have your own um, sort of life and no be, no be governed as much as, uh, as anything else. But he's, that, that was where my admiration for him came. Um, and I, I can of tend to speak about that um, if, if I was doing a, a, an immortal memory. That's the kind of side that I admired with Burns. Um, and you, you said you also liked uh, the, the songs. Is there a particular song that was a favourite? Well, they're just funny, and which is it's kind of controversial. There's a lot of folk are, are saying it's no, uh, um, and some folks say it is. Uh, so uh, I, I believe that it, that it is because it's just, it's a kind of styly ones. It he used some of the words that was that was in it was like a town and uh, a term for a year, a year and a half. Um, so there were, there were a lot of buns uh, connotations to it. Um, but it's a it's a fabulous wee song. It's called the U Box, and uh, it's an old song. And he just rewrote the lyrics to that song. Can he kept the tune, but rewrote the lyrics? But the lyrics actually tell the story um, of this country girl that fell in love and and her her uh, fiance or uh, went away to France to fight in the war. How does it go? Uh, so will you go to the u box Marion, and we're in the sheep with me. The Mavis sings sweetly, my Marion, but not so sweetly as thee. These aft were the words on my Sandy, as we met by the how of the glen, but nae me shall I meet with Sandy, for Sandy to Flanders is gain. And it's a beautiful, beautiful song, um, which I had the, the pleasure and a tear in my eye when, when it was sung uh, by Karen uh, uh, in, in Dumfries, and I'd, I'd been at a supper with Karen, and I spoke to her about the song, and uh, I was reciting it for uh, Bobby Jess, uh, who's putting a load of that stuff on YouTube, and she heard it and decided she was going to she was going to sing it, and it was a it was a pleasure. <laughs> Very good, Be beautiful words. Whether or not the Burns words is going to be the subject of debate for. For many a year, I would imagine, but a beautiful oh, one. Yeah, you you uh, you're a regular on the the New Covenant Bonds Club uh, annual outing. Is there any favourite places that you've been with the Bonds Club? Oh, I think everyone's everyone's been 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 a favourite place. I'm quite a tactile person, and uh, love the fact that when we go to places and you can touch places where. Where Burns has been. Um, when we went up to Larbert and we saw that statue that, that was there when, when when Burns and Nicola, I think it was, that went in their Highland tour and, and they stoke at that uh, monument that was put up there and they'd stoked at it and, and spoke about where they were going for their lunch. And to touch that, knowing that Burns had been there, uh, was 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 really quite exciting for me. Um, places like, I mean, I've, I've, I've been to Egypt and we managed to get into the, the pyramids and touching inside there as well. Places that are five thousand year old and you're touching that, somebody else has been touching it. Some, some, some uh, pharaoh or whatever. Um, so it, it just, it's just a, a great, it's a great feeling. It, it, it brings, brings back the thought of what, what life was like during their times. Uh, but for me, the, the most outstanding trip that we were, ever went on for me was a place that Burns never was and never referred to it, was Aaron. And that just was, was uh, it was an honour to be there because there was, there was people like Charlie Kerr, uh, the Billy Hasties who have, these are the guys that you can look up to and admire. Uh, Chris Rowley's and the, the, the camaraderie ship that was there that night. It was just a pleasure to be there. That's when we justified it on the basis that we were going somewhere 
to see what Bonds had missed. <laughs> That's right, aye. Um, I, I, I believe that he would have went there at some point, but we went there for him. I, th I, think, I think the subtitle of that was that we were looking at Burns country from a distance. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. But it was just a, it was a, a fantastic place. Uh, fantastic camaraderie ship. So. You, you talked about um, perhaps one day being able to learn Tam O'Shanter and, uh, you know, uh, and, and that was a, a kind of ambition of you. Any other ambitions in your, your, your Burns career? Um, anything else you would like to achieve, be it, be it learning a song or a poem or, or uh, achieve something with the club? I mean, I mean, I think, I think you're currently the convener of uh, the Centenary Committee. Maybe you can tell I us think... a bit about that. Aye, well, that's, that's, a, that's, that's coming on. We, unfortunately, we, we've not had a good year this year. Um, but we've, we've got the social platform with Zoom that we can meet up with. Kind of a wee bit difficult for some people because um, uh, Graham McClancy, our secretary, he does a lot of work uh, on computers already, and, and Zooming's no his as can he forty at the moment, um, which I can understand because, uh, as I say, I, I do a lot of work with the computer as well. Um, but uh, I think that it would it would be great to to it would be great to have a a fantastic centenary year. Um, so, I and, think and for, for the people that are watching, that's in, in 2023, isn't it? 2023. Uh, and we've, we've already got bits and pieces, wee, wee bits and pieces, as I said. Um, we've got the plan uh, for the castle being built, um, the castle pub in New Cumnock. Um, we, we, we found a plan for that. So, I've yet to see it, but uh, uh, my brother-in-law's got it, Alec Muir's got it, so I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there so that we can use vote it and I'll put pressure on him to show us it. <laughs> uh, um, we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction, but as I say, if we can have a, a really good uh, centenary year and come up with some great ideas, that would be, it'd be fantastic to do it. Because um, the, Burns, the Burns Cairn emerged from the, the half centenary, didn't it? It was a, a 50 year celebration in 1973, and that's been very popular for anybody that's not been uh, the Burns, Burns Cairns up the Glenafton Road, and it's a beautiful setting. And uh, I think you would enjoy, enjoy visiting it, and it's maintained by the, the Burns Club. Uh, oh, it's a beautiful sport. It's, it's a lo lo lovely sport, and I would recommend that anyone get, get up to see that and, and just being there. Um, and Billy Horn, uh, we were on the Zoom one night, and Billy had said something that I really didn't realise, and I, I think it's probably because I'm Stein and you come up, and you don't notice what's outside your back door. Uh, but he come up one of the times, and he said when he come up and he looked up the afternoon, he says, that view would be the same view that Burns would have had when he went up the afternoon. Now, Ken, he didn't get up the afternoon road. He would have went a different way to get up the afternoon, but he still, it was still the same outcome. He still yeah. saw the same hills. Um, so, and I think it was um, three, four weeks ago when I recorded something again for Bobby Jace. I recorded the u -box, actually. I was, I was uh, reciting the u -box. I did it a new come up uh, at, the, at Burns Cairn and uh, I just felt it was quite a fitting place to do it. Yeah, um, you, can, you, can, you can really, you can see where Burns got the words flow gently sweet Afton um, because it does flow gently at that point. It's, it's a beautiful river. Oh, beautiful way. As, and it, I mean, his, his words are, are uh, so perfect in that, that, that song. Uh, my Mary's asleep by the murmuring stream, and it does murmur when you listen to it. Uh, if you're sitting, and that that particular day when I was up there, um, I could hear the I could hear the, the the stream or the burn murmuring as it was going down by. Um, well, we, we, we're probably running out of time. I, I just wondered if there was if there's anything else Jim wants to ask, or or uh, perhaps if there's anything else that you don't think we've covered. 
what you want to tell us about? Uh, well, we were asking the, uh, about uh, things that that, that uh, we have achieved as the Burns Club. I think we've achieved loads of things. Um, I think that w what we've did over this lockdown session um, and this coronavirus has been second to none. We've been we've been so uh, so good at, at coming together, uh, and we've had some great great stuff with it. Bobby Jesse's uh, poetry corner on YouTube. Um, we've had uh, you come to Burns Club reciting the man's a man for all that, um, and we've actually got the young generation coming through reciting sweet often, um, and that is that is probably the, the, the late stages now because we've everybody sent their stuff in, I think, uh, one, one to go. Um, and it just shows you how the depth that we have within the, in the club, and it's great, it'd be great to see that when that, that comes through. So I've been, I've been highly sort of delighted being part of that as well. It's been a wee, wee bit more difficult with the younger generation trying to get them to, to get their stuff in. <laughs> um, whereas the older generation, we were just going to, we just got up and got it done, um, but uh, I, I'd, I'd like to leave you with, with one of the, the wee songs that, that Burns wrote. That um, I, I think it's a I think it's a, a great wee song, and I'm going to read it. I'd I'd love to leave you with the reading of it, and it's called "Contented with Little." So it's "Contented with Little and Canty with Mere, when e'er I forgather with sorrow or care." I give him a scalp as I'm creeping along with a cog against swats and an old Scottish song. A while's claw the elbow is troublesome thought, but man is a soldier and life is a thought. My mirth and good humour are coin in my pooch, and my freedom's my lordship, nay monarch their touch. A time in the trouble should be that me fall, a nicht of good fellowship soothers it all. When at the blithe end or journey at last, where the deal our thinks of the road he has passed. Blind chance let her snap her and stoit in her way, bit tame me, bit free me, in let the jade gay. Come ease, come travail, come pleasure at pain. My worst words are welcome, and welcome again. And I, I really, I really enjoy that, that wee song. And thank you very much, and that sounds like a perfect ending. Thanks very much for your time, and for being prepared to answer all these questions you've been throwing at you. Thanks very much, Graham. Thank you very much, Douglas. Thank you very much, Jim. You're welcome. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.